jungle, the mighty jungle, the lion sleeps tonight. In the jungle, the mighty jungle, the lions have breakfast with Bob. Oh, yeah. Macho Man. Day three, Breakfast with Bob. We are brought to you by ES Myoplex, Hoka One One, Polar Velofix, Normatec, Four Seasons, Hawalai, MEO Power Breather. Our next guest fourth here in 2013 is on a little bit of a winning streak three in a row i love that james kanama how are you doing james i'm um, really good like you say three in a row um maybe we go for four hey i would go for four right yeah, why not four in a row four wins in a row i mean you've been fourth here you just ran a 240 marathon at the end of a at the end of an iron man what the heck <laughs> you're fourth in frankfurt you're right up there this this year has been a really really good year it has. Um, it didn't start off so well. Um, I was 10th at Ironman South Africa, which was uh, absolutely not what I was hoping for at that race. Um, and frustration was pretty high at that point. Yeah. Um, and some soul searching and some deep thinking and decided to go back to Brett Sutton. Um, and that happened straight after Ironman South Africa. And well, the... The results speak for themselves. Well, and you were you were with Brett when you finished fourth, right? I was, yeah. That was, yeah. That was the last time he coached me was when I finished fourth, um, and then a hiatus from him over the years, and had some good results. Um, I was, you know, uh, but I just wasn't getting the the good results on the big days. You know, I had good results, and then I had, you know, it was a bit up and down um so, so that can be deceiving because you're you have some wins and you're going okay i'm doing the right things yeah and then you go up against it was, it was just unpredictable and you know this the sport's about getting it right on the right day it's not just about you know picking having having it come and go a, a, as it wants to you have to control it and be ready on the day um and brett's been been good at getting me to races that we focus on ready um so it's really good to be back in the fold i've been training in st moritz this year with him um and his squad uh, and yeah, it's it's paying off already. Uh, we'll see on the on the weekend. Um, but yeah, it's it's good. Well, anytime I see a 240 marathon, uh, that's you know at Hamburg. Now talk a little about that Hamburg race. You were talking about a little earlier that just it's one of those races that, besides the rain, uh, <laughs> it, it's just the course wise, it's spectacular. Yeah, uh, it's a first time race and. Uh, well, I, th I talk about the rain, but it didn't actually rain on race day. Right, it just <laughs> rained every day leading in. Yeah, <laughs> it rained constantly for about 72 hours before the race. Um, but race day was brilliant, absolutely brilliant. The course is great. You swim in a in the uh, lake right there under the bridge. You know the the one that's famous from the RTU triathlon. Yes. You finish under that bridge, and there's spectators everywhere. The bike is two laps, and it's fair, it's rolling, it's it's great roads. Uh, and then the run is four laps with really really good spectators um you know the hamburg uh community loves triathlon and uh, i said when i finished the race this is going to go down as one of the sell out ironmans this is going to be one of those ones that sells out in 60 seconds and wow and, you know um, i really do think that's that that's going to be an iconic ironman in the future it's a it's a good event so when i look at you know winning challenge roth fourth here and um, like like I said, this year second at 70.3 Switzerland, but first at, at Hamburg, you've you've been very consistent. You know, when you when you look at the overall, I know in your mind you're thinking <laughs> I haven't been consistently great on the big days. Yep. that's probably the one thing that you're, you're yeah. missing from. I think that is the frustration coming into coming into Kona is that I've had fourth year, I've also had. 24th year and 22nd year and a DNF year. Right. Uh, you know, I've had the bad experiences here and, and getting it right at Kona is what, what's really going to... That's be, what matters. ...go down in the, the record books, yeah. Yes. Um, so that's the goal. Uh, and when I rejoined Brett at the beginning of this year, uh, we kind of made a plan. We spoke about what needed to change, what needed to be improved. Um, and the plan was, you know, that's five months before Kona. So, so we looked at 2017 and we we're like, we're probably not going to be able to do all these changes by then. Um, so let's look at 2018. We'll build through. Uh, if if we get to, if we go well this year, we'll go to Kona 2017 um, and have a shot. Uh, but the plan is to get to 18. race winning in yes. form in in 2018. Um, as Seems you, like you're a little ahead of plan. Well, exactly. As you can see from <laughs> from uh, race results this year, uh, it's gone better than expected for for both Brett and myself. Um, and we're coming into this race on the back of some good results. Um, but again, trying not to put too much pressure on myself. The plan was for 2018 and still is very right. much uh, for 2018. Um, so we'll see how this goes, uh, test a few things, and, and if they pay off, then yeah, we, we may be right way up there. 
the other tough part for you this year is Jody Swallow, your, your, your lovely bride, is pregnant and five weeks away from giving birth. And you guys really haven't seen each other much this year because you've been at training camps and Jody's really had to stay home. Yeah, it's been a uh, uh, Jody Kahneman now. Oh, uh, sorry. <laughs> yeah, she's she's at home in, in Stellenbosch and uh, she has been now since August. Um, she she we, we I went to camp in, in St. Moritz and we didn't see each other for a couple months and then um, she I went home after Frankfurt, saw her for a bit, and then she came and watched I'm in Hamburg, which was great to have her there when I won that. Um, but then she came to St. Moritz, and the altitude really absolutely oh, destroyed her. Being pregnant is yeah. not good at altitude. So we had to send her home, and, and she's been home ever since, which means she's sitting at home pregnant and uncomfortable on her own, and I'm traveling to races and racing and training on my own, um, which is not, not ideal. You know, it's, no. it's, But it was something that we, we anticipated this year, and to be honest, we timed it really well. Um, she's five weeks away from from due date uh, and that gives me plenty of time to get this race out the way and get home and and be the daddy um, you know if we if we had timed it a little bit worse I might have had to choose between Kona and, and a, my firstborn child which would probably be a pretty easy decision and I wouldn't you, be sitting you, here with you you'd be you'd be back home <laughs> what, what would it mean to you to win this race because we've we've chatted about this over the years, and once you finish in that top five here, there's there's not that much that separates the the, the first guy from the from really from the seventh, eighth, ninth guy. Yeah, uh, I think once you finish in the top five, it almost becomes more difficult here um, because everything below that is a failure. Mm. Uh, so you really have to go for it, and you end up having these spectacular failures <laughs> because you know when you when you just race into a see where see where it ends up, and then you have a good day, you end up in the top five. Um, when you're racing to do better than top five uh, and you blow up, you end up 25th. <laughs> you know, it's, a, it's an all or nothing kind of, kind of event. Uh, but yeah, winning it is the goal. And it has been pretty much since I started this career. Um, my first email to Brett Sutton back when I wasn't really even a pro and we, we first started working together uh, back in 2008 was, I want to win Kona can you coach me? <laughs> that was pretty much the whole email. Um, so nothing's changed since then. Uh, you know, this year I sent him the same email <laughs> pretty much. <laughs> um, and, and we're back there and we're back working towards that goal. Um, and I do believe I can do it and it would mean everything to me. When you look at the training that Brett brings to the table, and, and it's funny because I, I was working with Brett a little bit with, with Lucas Verzbikas, working with him the last couple of years, and the part about Brett that I didn't know was he's, there's a lot of therapy that goes on, a lot of sort of not just the mentoring and the here's your workouts, but each person, the amount of individual attention, and he knows what motivates you, he, knows what, he knew what motivated Chrissy. How important has that been to get that back? I think that is essentially, in a nutshell, everything that Brett is as a coach. Yes. Uh, that ability to look at you, to assess you personally, and then give you what you need specifically, um, is what makes him uh, the coach of champions. It's what makes him the coach of Chrissy Wellington, Nicholas Spirig, Daniel Arif. Right. You know, uh, he can look at you and he can give you what you need specifically for you, and he does the same for me. You know, he looked at. He looked at my training over the last few years and he was, you know, he said, yeah, you're doing some things really well, but there's one or two things that if we tweak that, it's going to make a huge difference. And sure enough, it's making a difference. Um, and that ability to, to give the right medicine to the right person, not a one size fits all, not a, you know, everybody does their long ride on Saturday and everybody does their long run on Sunday and everybody, you know, has the, has the thing and we'll see how it goes. Uh, it's very individual. Uh, it is for everybody and it's not just the physical either. Um, right. You know, some people need confidence going into races. Some people need pressure going into races. Some people need, you know, uh, a hard whip going into races, you know, and, and it's giving the right person the right thing on the right day. Uh, you know, sometimes he won't say anything and sometimes he'll send you a, an email that really pisses you off because he wants you to, he, he <laughs> he knows that's you to be what's going to motivate you for your next session. Yes. Uh, you know, it's that kind of psychological game he plays and sometimes you don't even know he's playing it um, and that's when it works best, I guess. Yeah, it's, it's been fascinating to me because someone like Chrissy was trying to be an ITU athlete. Next thing you know, she's the best Ironman in the world. She didn't know that. <laughs> he knew that. Yeah. Right? I, you know, like, like I say, he gives you things that, that are working for you and you, you might be thinking, this is silly. I don't know why I'm doing this. This is not, gonna, this is not what I need. 
Uh, and sure enough, a few weeks later, you're like, wow, well, it's a good thing I did that because... <laughs> well, give me an example. An example you can where he, where he said something or gave you a workout that you thought, oh, I don't really know if that makes sense. It happens pretty much every week, to be honest. Right. Uh, okay. You know, he'll give, me a, he'll give me a long run, like he's given me a three-hour run. Um, and, and I'm like, I can't do a three-hour run. I'm exhausted. Like I can barely, I, I'm barely getting up the stairs and I must go run for three hours. Uh, and sure enough, you get into your rhythm, you start running and you finish the run and obviously you're tired but you think that might be the best session I've done in the preparation for this race you know I ran 40k's in three hours and you know yes. that's that's exactly what I need to do on race day and I was so tired before I started it that I didn't think I could do it which is just like race day. And, <laughs> and suddenly I go wow that was a that was a well-timed session that I started thinking I can't do this yes and if I was coaching myself I probably you wouldn't, wouldn't have done, done it, it. Right. I would have said i uh, give it a day and then I'll go and do it and it would have changed everything uh, and that's the kind of thing he does and he does it regularly I'm talking like two three times a week uh, you know. so you sort of dread it when those emails are coming in Absolutely. because you I, I don't really know what I'm doing to be honest uh, I send him a whatsapp tell him what I did for the day and he sends me a whatsapp back and tells me what I'm doing the next day and it works like that every single day so I it's not like you know for the week I don't have a week plan I don't have a week schedule uh, you know we get into a rhythm and I can kind of predict what's coming yes but he always throws curveballs in there uh and it's i think that's really good for me i think that's part of his you know we're talking about individual for athletes yes. part of what i need is to not think to just <laughs> you know because i think too much so part of what i need is to is to just get the message say okay i'll do that tomorrow morning waking up tomorrow morning and that's what i'm doing it does and no make time life. to think about it no yeah no analyzing no questioning just go out and do it uh it takes a lot of the mental pressure off and you know and if it if you can't do it you can't do it you right know, but you, you, gave you made shot. the effort yeah. and almost always i can do it because he's planned it that way so uh yeah i think that's been a big difference for me specifically personally um and he's obviously able to see that and and turn that into the result. uh different people need different things daniela gets her training three four a week in advance she knows everything she's doing and i have no clue you know um so it's it's interesting um and i think that's what part of brett's yes. genius is so do you when you have a camp will you have nicola there and daniela and, and those guys as well uh yeah we it comes and goes uh, it depends on what their their race schedule is and right. and um that kind of thing nicola was in saint moritz a bit this year um daniela and i were in maui for the last three weeks doing our, our last preparation together um and she looked pretty good. <laughs> uh, that's putting it mildly, I think. <laughs> uh, and, you know, there were some of those bike rides where I was thinking, oh, oh, am I going really badly? <laughs> <laughs> she's pretty uh, darn strong. She's pretty strong, yeah. yeah. Uh, I, would, I would not bet against her. Well, when you, it's funny. When you win at the 70.3 World Championship by, like, over by six minutes, you're going, okay, that's yeah, a she problem. Set, she set a marker there, and I, I, can, I can tell you from – from personally seeing it, she's not less fit than she was then. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Okay, girls. You, you, you might think about second. Um, you, you've been on this course numerous times. Like you said, you've been fourth, but you've also had, uh, had races where not up to your standards. What is it about this course you feel works for you? Because it is hot. It is windy. That, that seems to, to fit into you what works for you. Uh, yeah, uh, you know, some years it's worked for me, some years not so much. Uh, it's a really tough course. Uh, and I think one of the hardest things about this course is, is the actual competition. Yeah. Uh, you know, you can't just do your own race. Uh, it no, would, you be, can't steady state. It would be it, great yeah. if you could just look at your power numbers, ignore everyone around you. But when there's 40 guys around you, you have to race. You are racing. Uh, and that's where it gets difficult when, you, when you're racing and concentrating on guys around you and their movements and what they're doing uh, for eight hours. It's, it gets really difficult. Um, and when you add into that the heat, the humidity, the wind, um, it makes this race one of the toughest ones out there. Uh, and obviously, tough races favor the strong guys. And, you know, that's obviously what we're training to be is one of the strongest guys. So uh, I kind of think the tougher it is, the windier it is, the hotter it is, the better. Uh, you know, uh, that's what I've prepared for. And hopefully I've prepared better than the other guys. And, and the, the guy who's best prepared is the one who's going to do the best. Um, you know, this course is, is unique. Um, yes. It, it definitely is. And I think one of the, the big things is that the best runner always has a good race here yes uh, that's know, true always if you can run a sub 245 as a man it doesn't matter where you get off for the bar no you you are up there you will be a top five pretty much guaranteed uh maybe better you know and 
I try and keep that in my mind, but at the same time, you can't give guys 15 minutes, 20 minutes on the bike. You have to watch these guys. You have to, you know, and these these days, there are guys who are capable of putting 20 minutes into everyone on the bike. They are that strong. Well, it, um, yeah. So it, I think the the sport is evolving to the point where you can't have a weakness anymore. No. Uh, you can't give seven minutes up on the swim and still think you're going to be in the race. You can't give 10 minutes up on the bike and think you're still going to be in the race. And you can't, you can't be running a three hour ra- marathon on the back of a really hard bike and think that no one's going to catch you. Everyone's going to catch well, you. Well, especially here. Days. Yeah. Especially here when yeah. you got like you know, so, you got 20 guys who've been in the top 10 here before. Exactly. <laughs> I, you know, the, the depth in the field is just, you know, and you have a bad patch. One kilometer of walking is, is five positions. You know, Easily. This race. Easily. Easily. And I always look at it when you look from third through 13th, there's, you know, 30 seconds to a minute between each one. Yeah. And you know how much ebb and flow there was exactly. during that marathon. Yeah, one bad patch and, and three it, guys go yeah. by. And then, and then it becomes a very much a mental game. You know, in, in, when I came fourth, uh, in 2013, I had stomach cramps. I had to make a porta body stop. Um, and when you do that, four or five guys pass you, and it's very difficult to then refocus and go, I'm still in this race. You, you know, I've suddenly dropped out of the top 10. Now you got to go past those Am guys. Am I still in this race? Yeah. It doesn't feel like you are because in a normal Ironman, you drop out of the top 10. Yeah. Game over. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, but this race, it, it does ebb and flow. You know, guys come and go and you, you have a bad patch and they'll, lots of guys will pass you and then you've got to refocus and you can pass those guys back because they will have a bad patch. Um, it's a tough run and that, from the energy lab back, uh, is, is so hot and so hard and there's not many spectators out there. It's no. a, it's a you no. against you. <laughs> Did it surprise you that year when you got fourth? Was it almost uh, a little earlier than you thought that was going to happen? Yeah. Uh, it was, uh, you know, I'd been working with Brett and I'd come off the back, similar to this year actually. Um, that year I won a, a challenge half in in the beginning of September yep. and then I won Cosimal 70.3 three weeks out from Kona uh, and then I came in and I was, you know, let's just see what happens and I got fourth and it did kind of surprise me. This year I'm on the back of a win at Lanzarote around about the same time, beginning of September, a uh, win at 70.3 Weymouth four weeks out from Kona uh, and coming in here with not too many expectations. Right. So, uh, very similar pattern, and that wasn't really by design. It's just kind of how it's worked. Um, but it's it does give me some confidence going into the race. Uh, hopefully, I won't be as surprised this time, and I can actually, you know, um, not. I can focus a bit more on on the results rather than just kind of what I did that year, which was, well, let's see where we end up. Kind yes. Of thing. Well, so, does Brett? have you look at the other guys to see even care about that uh Jan Ferdano you got Lionel Sanders and some points Sebi might be coming through you want to go with them you don't want to go with them how much do those type of tactics play into this race in particular this race in particular the tactics are important you yes. have to know who you're racing uh you have to know you know the thing with this race is guys come in here um it might be their first Kona or it might be the first time that they believe in their Kona and they'll come in, they'll swim well and then they'll get excited. Uh, and you know, these guys will go out and they'll ride 350 watts for the first two hours. And if you don't know who that guy is and what he's capable of, then you try and mark that and you blow your own race to pieces because, you know, guys are, they tapered, they're feeling good. They, they kind of think, I'm going to have the race of my life here and off they go. And if you don't know who those guys are, <laughs> You need, to, you need to know what they're capable of. So yes, I do look at the other guys um, and you do pay attention to, you know, there's a Lionel Sanders and he's going to be behind me in the swim. There's a Sebastian Keenley. He's going to be behind me in the swim um, and they're going to be coming through and then you've got to make, make those decisions. decisions. Do, do I go with, with him? Do I let him go? How hard is he pushing? How long is he going to push this hard for? Uh, you know, um, and in, Frank- in Frankfurt, I tested a bit of that. Um, when, when Keenley came past the group, I went with him and I... F- Figured the other guys were coming too, and 10 k's later, I looked behind me, and it was just me with just with, you and Sevi with Sevi. Um, and then he put another surge in that blew blew me away and Patrick Langer away. Um, so I stayed with him for one of those surges, and the second one was not possible. Right. Um, you know, we're training to get to the point where we can stay with him for any of those surges. Um, I'm not sure we're there yet. We'll <laughs> we'll see but on that's Saturday. What, so I guess. Brett works on things like that. That is the plan. You know, uh, obviously the when I say work on things like that, you're working on being strong enough that you can get off the bike with right. the top guys. And right. Yes. What it takes to do that is is the same, whether it's Sebi or Sanders or sure. Frodo. Um, you have to you have to get to the point where you can get off the bike 
with the top guys and then be able to run and not fall apart in the run. Um, and that's what we're training for. Who it is, who we marking, who we watching, who we trying to surge with, uh, is going to change every year. So <laughs> we'll love we'll it. see who it is this year. Love it. James, we'll have a great one on Saturday. I'd love to see you back up there and top, Thank you, top. Yeah. Podium would be nice. Yeah, podium would be great. Yeah. I love it. James Kanema has been our guest. Pancho Man, take us out. Hush, my darling, we steal my darling, the lion sleeps tonight. Hush, my darling, we steal my darling, the lion sleeps I've breakfast with Bob. Pancho Man!